Hello, hello everybody, it's your Prof. Chalk, we're back again with another horror-ish video. This is the FBI's top 10 most wanted explained by Chilling Scares. Let's check it out. For almost 75 years, the FBI's top much 10 about most it. wanted list has helped bring down some of the nation's criminals most dangerous criminals. They haven't criminals. caught, right? Yeah, As for wanted. what makes the list special, it only features criminals that the FBI deems to be especially serious threats to society. Mm -hmm. And to get on it, you basically have to do something extremely messed up or have a very lengthy record Holy. of Holy! Hey, yo, brother is trying to uh, all so achievements have to do something run. extremely messed Look up or have a very... Look at this dude! Holy, that's everything on the list, probably. A lengthy record of major crimes. Jesus. The story behind the list goes that back in 1949, Economic. a reporter He's asked Kanash? the FBI to list out the 10 toughest guys that they were trying to catch toughest so they could guys. ask the public for help. What is this? An MMA After match? obtaining the list, the reporter published the criminals' pictures on the front page of the Washington Daily News, mm. and the rest is history. Since then, the FBI has been able to catch almost 500 wanted fugitives oh. thanks to public tips. Nice. The well, I imagine if they publish this, it's probably not great for the FBI because it basically shows people that you are not able to catch yourself, so it doesn't look that great for them, but These are it the helps them catch them. On the That's list. what's important, right? Badresh Kumar Shetan by Patel. Okay, okay. What the hell? Badresh Kumar Chetan Bao Patel. That sounds like six different names. On April 12, 2015, a CCTV camera captured two Dunkin' Donuts employees, okay. one male and one female, walking towards the shop's back room at around 9 30 p.m. I like PM Dunkin' Donuts when I was in America. A few seconds later, the man comes back into the camera's view, and it seems as if nothing out of the ordinary took place in the minute that went down between the two clips. But? A few minutes later, customers alerted the police when they didn't see any employees in the shop, and that's when the cops discovered something horrifying. Lying on the floor of the shop's back room was an Indian woman named Palak, lifeless, who had been pummeled to death by the man in the footage. As it was later revealed, the man who took- In one minute and then you just go about your day? Uh. Alex's life was her husband, Badrish Kumar. Oh, As the why? authorities later learned, the couple had been through a series of major arguments in the months oh. leading up to that day. According to court documents, the two of their visas were about to expire in a few weeks. Palak wanted to go back to India, but Badrish Kumar wanted to stay in the US, and it looks like he couldn't find a better way to communicate his frustration <laughs> with the situation than to brutally take his wife's life. God damn. After the crime, Badrish Kumar was last seen taking a taxi from a hotel in New Jersey to a train station in Newark, but what he did after that is really anyone's guess. To bring more How did they not catch this dude? That's attention like... to a suspect who might otherwise walk away scot-free, the FBI placed him on the most wanted list. Okay. As okay. of today, there's a I'll be honest with you, just one murder did not seem like to me like he would be on the... I, when I hear the most wanted list, I imagine dude that done like all the crimes, uh, like 15 times over. A quarter million dollar reward to bring the suspect into custody. Damn. But almost 10 years after the crime, it looks like that won't happen anytime oh, soon. Who is a ninja? How did they not... Many years? Alejandro Rosales Damn. Castillo. He the youngest young. suspect on the most wanted list, 26-year-old yeah, Alejandro 20, Rosales okay, never Castillo, mind. has been on the FBI's radar for more than eight years. In 2016, eight years. he shot his female co-worker, Sandy Lee, in a wooded area in Cabarrus County, North Carolina. A few days later, the female victim's car was located at a bus station in Phoenix, Arizona. As the authorities later found out, there were multiple people involved in the case, with the main ones being the victim, a woman named Amia Feaster, and Alejandro himself, Feaster? all of whom worked together Ew. at a restaurant in Charlotte. During the investigation, the cops learned that Sandy Lee and Alejandro had briefly dated, and after uh -huh. their breakup, Castillo started dating his other co-worker, Amia Feaster. According to court okay. documents, Sandy Lee had apparently lent some money to Alejandro, and on August 9th of that year, he texted her to meet up with him at a quick trip located on Eastway Drive in Charlotte, claiming that he was going to pay her back. Disturbingly, that's when Castillo decided to rob her at gunpoint, <laughs> take her life, and flee to Mexico. Okay, that's not that In funny. an eerie clip of CCTV footage that was later released by the authorities, the suspect can be seen crossing the Mexican border through Nogales, Arizona, along with his girlfriend, Amia. A couple of months later that same year, Amia turned herself into the authorities in Mexico and was charged with accessory after the fact of felony murder and larceny accessory of a motor vehicle. Accessory after the fact. Based on her testimony, she that? and Alejandro had been staying with the killer's cousin. At some point, Castillo had once again disappeared with no explanation, and that's when she- How does one just disappear like this? I thought that this was- If you know the person, easy, just catch them. I guess it's not that easy. People can just disappear. She decided to turn herself in. Holy. As of 2024, the FBI has no further clues that could lead to God, Castillo's arrest. God, that's so creepy. 
Right now, all they know is that he's probably still living in Mexico. The last time he was seen, he wore his hair short and shaved on the sides, but that's pretty much all they have to go on. That's not a lot As of to today, there's still a quarter million dollar reward out for his arrest, God but there have damn. been no further updates on his case. Okay, uh, for anybody that knows that if you guys know, does Mexico and America have like an extradition rule? Like if they catch him in Mexico, do they send him to America to serve a sentence or what happens to the dude? Before we move on, I wanted to take some time oh. to talk about this video's sponsor. Ruja Ignatova. Ruja In 2016, the Bulgarian entrepreneur Ruja What? This is how you represent us in a foreign country, motherfucker? Ignatova I am stepped from on stage in a beautiful red like, dress at the Clean like Rush Global Eastern event European? in Wembley, London to talk about her vision for the future of her crypto company, OneCoin. Oh, oh I've During heard the... about this woman. She yoinked the shit out of money from crypto and then just disappeared. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, presentation, she claimed that thing, in girl. two years everyone would forget about Bitcoin and that one coin would dominate the crypto one world coin. as the one true cryptocurrency. It's hard to imagine that any of her excited, applauding investors knew that they were stepping into what was later described by the New York Times as one of the biggest scams in history. Yoink! For several yeah, years, Ruja, or the crypto queen as she's known nowadays, crypto promised queen. her buyers a five-fold and even ten-fold return on their investment. In so if you look at that face and you believe anything she told you, you deserve to get off at gunpoint without the gun. One coin. Bam. Normally, these kinds of claims are an immediate red flag. Yes. But because the entire world was scrambling to get on the crypto action, a ton of investors jumped at the opportunity without thinking twice, Dummies. resulting in a massive OneCoin buying frenzy. Dummies. Between 2014 and 2016, OneCoin raked in more than $4 billion from unsuspecting investors, with more than $50 million Damn. coming from investors That's in the a US. lot of money. As the investors learned when they bought into OneCoin, the company was pretty much a pyramid scheme in which they were rewarded for recruiting their friends to buy it as well. And for a while, the shady multi-level marketing model seemed to be working for Ruja. However, in 2016, a lot of her investors started complaining that they were really struggling to sell their one coins and that they didn't see how they'd ever recoup their investments. Word started to spread online that one coin was a scam, which yeah, drew the no attention shit. of the media as well as federal investigators. Ah, the only thing that surprised me so far is that it took so long for people to realize that this is a scam. Fortunately, it was a little too late by then. Less than a year and a half after her presentation in Wembley, Ruja got on a plane from Bulgaria to Greece and was never Wait, seen again. she went again. to Greece? Disturbingly, Damn, that's not even the that investigations, far. a bunch of really messed up emails written by Ruja were leaked by federal investigators in which the crypto queen made it more than clear that she knew she was scamming people out of their hard-earned money from the very start. In some of her emails, she admitted right, that the Alyssa, it's hard for me to feel bad about people investing into crypto. Like, yes, almost. All of them are scams. Even the ones that end scams are like, it hey, doesn't do anything. Maybe at some point in the future, the company wasn't actually mining any you know, coins. That her coin was trash, and that her investors were idiots for trusting trash her. coin. In one of her emails, she proposed an exit strategy to her partner Carl Greenwood, which consisted of taking the money, running away, and blaming somebody else for the whole thing. During the investigation, Carl ended up pleading guilty to wire fraud and conspiracy Wait, caught to launder the money, for which he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Oh! As it was later revealed, Oh! And she was not even the main dude! Damn, if they catch her, how long is she gonna get? She done! Yeah, the run! had been on to Ruja long before she fled from Bulgaria, even recruiting her American boyfriend to look into her company's practices hey. for them. After learning about her extremely sketchy business practices and her grand scheme to steal billions of dollars from investors all around the world, she was charged with wire fraud, money laundering, and securities fraud. This promptly landed her a spot on the FBI's most wanted list, becoming only the 11th woman to earn that distinction. Hey, there's Bulgarian. This is Bulgarian, not Bulgarski. Looking into her past to find clues as to what could have influenced Ruja to do something so nefarious. Money, brother. Money, it's a lot of money. What do you mean? What could have possibly influenced her? I don't know. What could it be? Money! This federal investigators Come found on, some man. pretty interesting stuff. As it turns out, Ruja was fluent in four languages, was extremely intelligent, once had a job at a high ranking consulting firm, and had been obsessed with fashion and maintaining her image fashion. from a very young age. Why didn't she it maintain was only our with the body though? Of hindsight that prosecutors huh? were able to clearly see how she used all these qualities to carry out her malicious plans. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the FBI will find her anytime soon. It's been rumored that after fleeing the country, the crypto queen may have drastically altered her appearance with plastic surgery oh. and is believed to travel with armed guards at all times. 
Well, disturbingly, I mean, there have also been... Technically, wouldn't it be better not to travel with armed guards? Because if you travel with armed guards, people are going to think you are somebody. That Several allegations that she was murdered by an accomplice, but this hasn't been proven. If she is still alive, the FBI suspects Ruja is traveling on a German passport to a the German United passport. Arab Emirates, Bulgaria, Germany, Russia, Greece, and multiple countries in Eastern Europe. <laughs> Imagine she's back in Bulgaria, bro. That would be the ultimate fuck you. Considering how elusive she's been since her disappearance almost eight years ago, it's unlikely the FBI will oh ever find God. out what became of Ruja More than and four Matova bill. after pulling God off one of the damn. largest financial scams in history. Hey, slay queen. That's not that Arnaldo bad. Arnaldo Jimenez. Ar on May 12, Ar 2012, Ar Arnaldo. Arnaldo Jimenez and his wife Estrella went out to celebrate their oh, wedding in a black brother. 2006 four-door Maserati. Less than 24 hours after the couple their wives. said their vows, Arnaldo knifed his wife to death in the car, dragged her into the bathroom tub of her apartment in Burbank, Illinois, and disappeared without Bro, action. usually it takes people a couple years to realize they've made a mistake when, we, when they marry. What happened with this dude's honeymoon? Trace. When nights. Estrella didn't come back to pick up her kids at school the next day, her well, family called kids. the cops, who ended up finding Estrella's oh. remains still in her wedding dress in her bathtub. Bro. Immediately, a nationwide search for Why? Arnaldo was launched, but by that time, the suspect was long gone. During the investigation, it was revealed that Jimenez had reached out to a friend before fleeing and told him, if anyone asks where I am, tell them I went to Mexico. <laughs> Since then, the authorities have received multiple tips that Jimenez may have fled to Durango or Tamaulipas, Durango? Mexico, where he's believed to be hiding out with family members. Initially, a $100,000 reward was issued for mm. anyone with information that could lead to his arrest. White, Hispanic. Four years after he was placed on the most wanted list, the FBI increased the reward to a quarter million dollars. Mm. Burbank police have stated that in the past 12 I... years, they've received... Bro, he looks... Uh, that is a very recognizable face, right? Because... I don't know. Hundreds of tips about Arnaldo's whereabouts, what? but none of them have led to anything significant. Ah. After the crime, investigators traced his phone and determined that he had traveled from Chicago to Tennessee, then to Arkansas, and from there to Hidalgo, Texas, Hidalgo, very close Texas. to the Mexican border. They were unfortunately unable to determine where he went after that. Probably Police Texas. have also revealed that Mexico. the car in which Arnaldo carried then... out his heinous crime was never found. If the suspect is ever caught, he'll be spending the rest of his life in prison for first-degree murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. <laughs> but based on how things... I think the unlawful flight is the least of his problems. ...have played out since the last time he was seen, it's unlikely Arnaldo will ever pay for his atrocious crime. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus, these are, this is... But, the thing that scares me the most about this video is how many people can murder somebody, they know the person that did it, and they don't get caught. Like, god damn, it's America, like... I expect to tell him innocent. You know. Okay, that homie looks one of crazy. Haiti's largest and most violent criminal gangs, Craze Barri, Vitel Ohm Innocent, Haitian. which do not let his name Haitian? fool you, he is indeed not innocent, has terrorized the region for years, <laughs> earning a spot on the FBI's most wanted list for his role in a string of brutal kidnappings and murders. In October 2021, he collaborated with the notorious 400 Morozo gang to carry out the high profile kidnapping of 17 Christian missionaries 17. in Haiti. What? Wait, wait. Why the missionaries? What they doing? Why the missionaries? Huh? Seemingly, five of the kidnapping victims were children. One as young as eight months old. Uh, Held at gunpoint. Uh, bro, what can an eight months old kid do to you that you want to kidnap it? Eight month old kids are annoying. I want to stay as far away as possible from them. What are you doing? Messages were reportedly kept captive for two months while the gangs demanded a ransom of one million dollars oh, per ransom. hostage. Oh, it was only after an anonymous Our donor paid an undisclosed is. sum to Craze Barry and 400 Mawozo that the missionaries were finally Finally released. Okay, they released them. Based on court documents, Innocent and his crew ended up spending the ransom money on weapons. That same year, Not the good. Haitian president was assassinated, which caused Innocent's influence to grow exponentially in the chaos that engulfed the country. In the aftermath of the assassination, Crazebury claimed new territories and expanded their ranks quicker than the cops could even keep track of. Oh, in brother. 2023, Crazebury boasted an estimated 600 members, many of whom were young children who were involuntarily recruited to serve Innocent's criminal organization. Wait, is that a good idea though? You get some young kid that you pissed off and then give him a gun, what is the chance of that kid just Almost being like, exactly oh, you, one you. year after the kidnapping of the Christian missionaries, Crazebury kidnapped two US citizens under Innocent's orders, Marie Odette Franklin and Jean Franklin. Unfortunately, one of the victims did not survive, Ooh. while the other was held for a $300,000 ransom. Damn. Somehow, Innocent still managed to walk away scot-free. How? 
in April 2024. America can bomb anybody anywhere, but they can't bomb this dude? Come on, bro. Airplane go boom boom, CNN no? CNN released an interview where Innocent brazenly like shown off see his him. luxury home, which sticks out like a sore thumb in the extreme poverty surrounding him. Surrounded by gold rim couches and chairs, oh Innocent explained to the God. reporter how he came to power. In the interview, he shamelessly blamed Haiti's corruption on the country's politicians, refusing to take it. Yeah, you definitely have zero part in being the problem, brother. No part in it. Any responsibility for his own actions. Interestingly, he also alleged that before becoming the leader of Cranesbury, he had once owned multiple legitimate businesses, including a hotel and a rental car company, but said his companies were destroyed by the government. So According to multiple crime analysts, sense. Innocent was once a political activist before he turned to violent crime to maximize his influence. Back in the US, Innocent is wanted by the FBI for an insanely long list of crimes, including <laughs> yeah, kidnapping for ransom, theft, murder, <gasps> assault, vehicle theft, and destruction of property. Oh, brother. There's a $2 million reward $2 for million. information leading to his arrest. But with powerful connections and an armed gang, it'll be pretty tough to ever bring him to justice. Uh, use the plane, America. Use the plane. You got the plane. Go boom, boom. Omar no? Alexander Cardenas. Omar Alexander Cardenas. In 2022, Cardenas. the FBI released two eerie before and after clips of a man walking into That's and then running boy. away from a shopping mall area on August 15th, 2019. The man seen in the video is 29-year-old Omar Alexander Cardenas. And let's just say that he didn't exactly go shopping in okay. the time that... He, he's not even running. That is like that is penguin run. That is wobbling. Collapse between Look those at two that. clips. After disappearing from the camera's view, Omar walked up to a man standing outside the Hair Icon Barber Shop Pop at him. an outdoor shopping center and fired several rounds from his semi-automatic handgun at his head, mm. killing him instantly. Immediately after committing the crime, Omar Why? fled the scene a little after 4 p.m. As he can be seen in the eerie FBI footage. A suspected member of the Pierce Street Gang in Los Angeles, oh, he's a and gang often member. going by the nickname Dollar, Omar is suspected Dollar. to have fled to Mexico to seek refuge among his relatives. In September 2021, a federal arrest warrant was issued for the suspect after he was charged with murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, thanks to which he was pinned on the most wanted billboard. Even though he committed a brutal crime pretty much in broad daylight and didn't exactly shy away from the cameras after doing it, hey, he wasn't very fast. Didn't know surprisingly little about Omar. The only things they really know about him are that he's around 300 pounds, wears thick prescription glasses, has at least one tattoo, and is considered armed and dangerous. Huh. Which alone is hardly enough to track down a yeah. criminal who's crossed international borders to flee prosecution. With time, hopefully more information will surface leading to his potential extradition and arrest. But for so now, there is it looks like Omar from will Mexico to America. criminal. Because that answers my Yulan earlier question. Adonai Archaga Karayas. Okay, brother, how many names do you need? Huh? Huh? Back in the 80s, a gang known as the Mara Salvatrucha was set up to protect Salvadorian Mara immigrants Salvatrucha. from other gangs in the Los Angeles area. Fast forward a couple of decades, and the Mara, or the MS-13 for short, had become one of the most brutal and violent criminal organizations Damn, in the how world. many gangs are there? Nowadays, MS-13 has a strong presence in El Salvador, gang, gang. Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, the US, Canada, and even Spain. They engage even in Spain? all kinds of criminal activity, Spain is quite from far away from these other countries. human trafficking, oh, yeah. extortion, murder, and racketeering, often using extreme violence to maintain their influence and control. For many years, a man named Yulan Adonai Archaga Karayas operated as the head of MS-13's criminal That's activities in Honduras, providing support and resources to the gang in Central America and the U.S. with firearms, narcotics, and loads of cash. Okay. Often operating so he was the leader in Honduras. Porky, Yulan is wanted by the FBI for trafficking multi-ton loads of drugs through Honduras to the U.S. and for the killing of several rival gang members. Among Porky's colorful criminal Porky. charges, you'll find everything from murder, to racketeering conspiracy, to drug importation, to possession of machine guns. Even though he's only around 160 pounds, Yulan is considered one of the most powerful men in Honduras, as the MS-13 gang has had the country in a chokehold for years. Damn. The most shocking part of the story is that at one point, Porky had already been apprehended by the Honduran authorities, and was even taken to a okay. courthouse for a hearing on charges of murdering two Honduran prosecutors. I killed the, the prosecutors at this point just throw him in prison what is the court gonna do
Hearing it, 20 yeah, armed he men guilty. dressed up in the same clothes as the anti-gang police units walked into the building escorting a veiled suspect and suddenly opened fire on the guards. Oh. In just a few seconds, the men subdued the guards and safely escorted Porky out of the courthouse, killing four police officers in the process. Oh, sure. For obvious reasons, Porky is considered armed and extremely dangerous. God, damn, bro. Due to the sheer nature of his crimes, the FBI is offering $5 million Yo. to anyone who can provide information leading to his arrest. Well, well I'm gonna be honest with you after... <laughs> Hearing about that last uh, situation, I don't know if I want to provide information about this dude. One of the things that makes it extremely difficult to track a suspect like Porky down is that he's taken every possible measure to fly under the radar. Although he's believed to still Plus be in Honduras, he and his security you know. team use untraceable numbers from Israel and Poland, and he goes to extreme Not lengths Poland? to keep his whereabouts a secret when he contacts his family. Although the hunt for Porky is far from over, he's likely to remain one of the most elusive and dangerous fugitives on the FBI's most wanted list for Possession years. Possession machine guns. Multiple guns. Alexis Flores. Alexis Flores. One Only seemingly two peaceful names. afternoon in July 2000, five year old Ariana de Jesus was playing on the street in Philadelphia. A five year old. Bro, why? With her sister and friends when her mom went out for a quick trip to the store. Okay, maybe it's the mom. When her mom came back, she it started making every better, but... parent's worst nightmare. Ariana had been taken by a suspicious man. Immediately, her mother reported her missing, triggering a citywide search for the five year old girl. In a desperate effort to bring more attention to the disappearance, Ariana's family and friends covered every neighborhood wall, light post, and stop sign with flyers and missing posters, but nobody had any clue what had happened to the little girl. Unfortunately, after a few weeks of searching, the cops found her unresponsive in the basement of an abandoned apartment building just a few blocks away from where she had been taken. Disturbingly, the authorities also found a t-shirt featuring a bold political logo at the crime scene, which they deduced what belonged to- What the hell does a five-year-old have to do with politics? ...to the suspect. <gasps> During the investigation, a man came forward stating that he was pretty certain the t-shirt had belonged to a guy he only knew as Carlos, a drifter Carlos. he had once employed as a handyman. Unfortunately, despite the promising lead, the case went cold for several years, leaving Ariana's family devastated and confused. Jeez, that would be awful. It wasn't until 2007 that the authorities were able to analyze the shirt again thanks to recent advances in DNA technology, and what they found changed the course of the investigation forever. The DNA in the shirt was a perfect match with that of a man named Alexis Flores, who had been arrested okay. in Arizona in 2002. I mean, I, I don't know how mean this sounds, but this dude looks like somebody that would join kids, okay? Like, that is a face that if I had kids and I see that face, I'm like, nope, kids, you see that? You run, okay? That face, run. Police, run. I don't care if he's Two the for nicest person in the universe. For no, no, no. Unfortunately, by the time his DNA was linked to the crime, he had already been deported to Honduras years earlier for other less serious crimes. As the oh, police would later find, things. finding Alexis Flores was going to be a lot more difficult than they initially thought. Throughout his colorful criminal career, Alexis had provided multiple fraudulent dates of birth and names. Ah. Despite his inclusion in the most wanted list, the only things the FBI really knows about him are that Alexis is around 5'4", 130 pounds, and Small has visible scars on his forehead and right cheek. Due to his crimes, he's obviously also considered armed and extremely dangerous. With a quarter million dollar reward on his head for the crimes of kidnapping and murder, you would think that someone oh, would have come kid. forward with information come on this guy. On, bro. But 24 years after the crime, Alexis has remained unfound. I mean, it's probably changed quite a lot 24 years. Wilbur Villegas Palomino. 24, god damn. The National Liberation Army, or ELN, is a Marxist, Leninist, guerrilla insurgency Ugh, group commies. in Colombia, often referred to as Colombia's last true Disgusting. insurgency and one of Latin America's most powerful criminal organizations. In the past few years, the ELN has expanded aggressively into Venezuela, thanks to which the National Liberation Army now has over 6,000 active members. Hey, yo! Interestingly, for That's the first few people. decades after its foundation, the group mostly focused their efforts on kidnapping, extortion, and attacking oil infrastructure. But over time, the ELN stopped shying away from drug trafficking and became oh. deeply involved in the international drug trade, earning them the attention somehow, of the FBI. In 2023, Wilver Vallejo... I suppose brings the attention of the FBI, not the murder or the kidnapping or the other stuff. Vegas Palomino became the okay. 530th addition to the FBI's most wanted list on multiple serious charges ranging from narco-terrorism to murder narco to drug trafficking. Often running under the alias The Hog, Chief. Palomino is a high-ranking member of the National Liberation Army who's been involved in a 20-year conspiracy to distribute drugs from Colombia to the U.S. 20 years. Thanks to which, a warrant for his arrest was issued back in 2020. Wow. 
Wilver has also been accused of murdering multiple human rights advocates in Venezuela and the Catatumbo region in Colombia between 2017 and 2019. And the Due to his high rank dude. and his responsibility in flooding the streets of Houston and other major U.S. cities with drugs, Whoa, the United States at? Department of State's Narcotics Rewards Program oh, is right, offering you okay? a reward of up to five million okay. dollars for information leading five to Pablo's arrest. As of today, it's a complete mystery where this guy is. But considering the ELN oversees the production of over 200 tons of drugs, which are later okay, distributed I, worldwide, bro, if you have a uh, like a, a agency army of six thousand people, I imagine it wouldn't be that hard to catch people and try and get information out of them like it's six thousand people it's not like 15 dudes randomly like why is this so obviously hard obviously including the u.s i don't understand it makes sense why he was put on the list just yoink somebody there donald like, eugene hey, you know fields this? the second Ooh. since 2022 donald eugene fields hell. has been wanted by the fbi for the alleged trafficking of at least one child in missouri between 2013 and 2017 can y'all motherfuckers just leave the children alone, please? What have the children done to you? Leave them alone. According God to the authorities, it. Fields took a 14-year-old girl and offered her to his friend Ted Sartori Jr. in exchange for cash, cars, motorcycles, vacations, and Christmas presents. Bro, this is the 2000s and some shit. This ain't 18 some shit. You can't offer people anymore last known to live in franklin in County, most places Missouri, on Fields earth has apparently been moving around the country since 2022 working sporadic jobs as a tree trimmer and independently tree selling trimmer. used cars in an effort to fly under the radar based on court documents it's believed that donald probably took more than one victim and then he might uh. be hiding out with his girlfriend jennifer Isgriggs, who is also wanted on a felony warrant for failure to provide child support since 2022 the cops that's a warrant? That's a that's a felony? I mean, she looks fucked They received but... multiple tips indicating oh, that Fields spent yeah. some time in the Tampa area. And as soon as they heard that, they started running Facebook ads with his face on a most wanted poster to ask mm. for the public's assistance in locating him. And it didn't work. Unfortunately, it's likely that by then, Fields had already fled to Stover, Missouri. The FBI has also placed large billboards with Fields' face in cities where he's known to travel. But so far, it seems like he's managed to stay a step ahead of the cops. How? Earlier in 2024, Sartori, Fields' partner in crime, pleaded guilty to his charges and will face up to 30 years in prison. Wait, so did that guy actually accept the kid for like a car and a, like a brand new gun or something? What? He'll the also hell? likely have to pay $25,000 in restitution to his victim. Wow. Based on court documents, years. he'll be officially sentenced in early November 2024. As per the FBI's description of the suspect, Fields has multiple scars on his body as well as a tribal print tattoo on his right shoulder. With such a big effort being made by the FBI to make this guy's face Ooh. known, hopefully someday Yo, he'll be that dude's skin looks boiled. recognized by someone and promptly turned into the authorities. How the, okay, how the, but for now, the cops have urged the public to consider him armed and dangerous. How do you not catch that dude? Look at him. He's like, if I saw him, I would know him. Like that is a face that you don't just like, yeah, I don't know who that is. What the hell? Oh, anyway, this video kind of annoyed me. How are these people not caught? That is annoying. Anyway, let me know what y'all think and I'll see y'all next time, okay? Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.